Hello everyone. Welcome to Analog Communication Tutorials. In this video, I am going to discuss on practical RC low pass filtered white noise. Please note, in my previous two videos, I have discussed white noise and ideal low pass filtered white noise. Those videos will be a prerequisite for this video. So, I highly recommend you to watch them before you continue with this one. You can watch the video on ideal low pass filter white noise by clicking on the link shown in the top right corner right now or I will leave the links of both the videos in the video description below. Let us consider a practical RC low pass filter as shown in figure 1 here. Let the input to the filter be a white Gaussian noise process W of t with mean equal to 0 and power spectral density equal to n naught divided by 2. These are the properties of white Gaussian noise and I have discussed them in my previous videos. Now, the objective of this video is to study the characteristics of passing this white Gaussian noise process through a practical RC filter which creates a random noise at the output which is definitely not a white noise and let the sample of this noise signal be represented by n of t. Coming back to the RC combination, the frequency response of the filter itself is given by h of f equals 1 divided by 1 plus j 2 pi f RC. This is the frequency response of the filter. This is also shown in equation 1 here. Please note this is the frequency response of the practical RC filter. Further, the 3 dB cutoff frequency of the practical RC filter is given by Fc which is given by 1 divided by 2 pi RC. Now, coming to the input, as already said, the power spectral density of the input white Gaussian noise process is given by SW of f equals n naught divided by 2. It should be noted it is a constant and is independent of frequency. Let us now find the power spectral density of the noise process at the output of the practical RC low pass filter, which let it be denoted by SN of f and is equal to SW of f, which is the power spectral density of input white noise multiplied by magnitude square of h of f, where h of f is the frequency response of the RC filter. I will now substitute for S w of f, which is the power spectral density of white noise and is equal to n naught by 2. Similarly, the magnitude square of h of f is equals to 1 divided by 1 plus 2 pi f r c whole square. This is from equation 3 and this is from equation 1. Equation 4 depicts the power spectral density of the noise process at the output of the practical RC low pass filter. Let us move on and find the autocorrelation function of the output noise process. To do that, let us recall the fact that the inverse Fourier transform of the power spectral density Sn of f gives the autocorrelation function because the autocorrelation function and the power spectral density, they form a Fourier transform pair. Since equation 4 here depicts the power spectral density of the noise process at the output of the filter, if I apply inverse Fourier transform to this, I should get the autocorrelation function of the noise process at the output of the filter. Therefore, I can write the autocorrelation function of the noise process at the output of the filter Rn of tau is approximately equal to inverse Fourier transform of the power spectral density of the noise process which is Sn of f. I am going to take the contents from equation 4 here. So, this complete term is the power spectral density and I am going to place it in place of Sn of f here which is shown in this part of the equation. Now, we know that n0 by 2 is constant. So, I am going to take it outside. So, what remains is inverse Fourier transform on 1 divided by 1 plus 2 pi f r c square. 
Now, we are stuck at finding the inverse Fourier transform on this particular part of the equation. There is a shortcut for this and for that I am going to use the Fourier transform phase given by exponential of minus k into magnitude of tau is a Fourier transform pair of 2k divided by k square plus 2 pi f whole square. Here k is considered as a constant. Let us now put k is equal to 1 divided by rc in equation 7. This is shown in this part of the equation. Therefore, it will become exponential of minus tau into 1 by rc is a Fourier transform pair of 2 into 1 divided by rc divided by 1 divided by rc whole square plus 2 pi f whole square. Let me now take this rc and multiply it to the second term here. So, the second term becomes 2 pi f rc whole square. And therefore, the denominator of this equation becomes 1 plus 2 pi f rc whole square divided by rc whole square. Now, this denominator part here, I am going to take to the numerator which is shown here. Now, if you look at this, there is already a rc in the numerator. So, rc and a part of rc square gets cancelled. So, what remains in the numerator is 2 rc which is shown here. The remaining part of the equation is equal to 1 divided by 1 plus 2 pi f r c whole square. This is our equation 8. So, we can therefore say exponential of minus of magnitude of tau by r c is a Fourier transform pair of 2 r c multiplied by 1 divided by 1 plus 2 pi f r c square. Now, let me take this 2 rc to the LHS. So, it would become 1 divided by 2 rc and this 2 rc will be cancelled. So, what remains in RHS is only this part. Please note that. Let us now recognize the RHS of this equation and go back and recognize the RHS of the autocorrelation function of the noise process at the output of the filter. If you look at this, this is what we have as the RHS of our current equation. Now, since we are trying to find the inverse Fourier transform of this part, which is also the RHS of the equation 8 here, we can therefore say the inverse Fourier transform of this part is equal to 1 divided by 2 RC multiplied by exponential of minus magnitude of tau divided by RC. Therefore, now, I will take the LHS of this equation, which is the inverse Fourier transform of the RHS of the equation, which is also equal to the RHS of our autocorrelation function equation. So, I am going to substitute the LHS of equation 8 in place of this particular form, which is shown in this equation. So, autocorrelation function of the output noise process equals N naught by 2 multiplied by inverse Fourier transform of 1 divided by 1 plus 2 pi f r c whole square, which is exponential of minus magnitude of tau by r c multiplied by 1 by 2 r c. After rearranging the terms, I will obtain the autocorrelation function of the noise process at the output of practical r c filter as n naught divided by 4 r c exponential of minus magnitude of tau divided by rc. In this slide, figure 2 depicts the power spectral density of the noise process at the output of the filter and figure 3 represents the autocorrelation function of the noise process at the output of the filter. From the previous mathematical analysis, if I write Sn of f is equal to n naught divided by 2 into 1 divided by 1 plus 2 pi f r c whole square. If I consider f equal to 0 in the Sn of f equation RHS, I will find the RHS reducing to n naught by 2. So, at frequency equal to 0, we find the value of Sn of f equals to n naught divided by 2. And as the value of frequency increases, 
the denominator of the SN of f equation increases and therefore the power spectral density gradually decreases. Let me now recall the 3 dB cutoff frequency of the RC filter which is given by Fc equals 1 divided by 2 pi RC. When I substitute Fc equals to this part which is 1 divided by 2 pi RC in the equation for the noise power spectral density at the output of the filter, I find Sn of f reducing to N0 divided by 4 which is shown in the dashed lines here. Please note we have taken Fc equals 1 by 2 pi Rc and we have also taken minus Fc. Now coming to figure 3 which represents the autocorrelation function of the noise process. We have found previously this to be Rn of tau equals N0 divided by 4 Rc into exponential of minus magnitude of tau divided by Rc. If I assume tau to be equal to 0, then Rn of tau reduces to N0 divided by 4Rc. So, if I come here at tau equal to 0, if you look at this, the value of Rn of tau is N0 divided by 4Rc. Then, as the value of tau increases, we will find the RHS of Rn of tau reduces. Therefore, once again, Rn of tau diagram is shown to decrease as the value of tau increases. One of the important points to note from the autocorrelation function of n of t is the decorrelation time. So, what is decorrelation time? It is a time instant t naught at which r n of tau reduces to 1 percent of its peak value. This is called decorrelation time. Upon computation, you will find the decorrelation time tau naught equals 4.61 Rc. Therefore, if I now come back to the autocorrelation function diagram and sample this signal at a rate equal to 1 divided by tau naught, then the samples that are generated will be uncorrelated from one another. Further, since the input to the signal is a Gaussian white noise process, the sampled signal will also be Gaussian. Therefore, we can finally state the samples that are generated by considering a sampling rate equal to 1 divided by tau naught will generate a set of samples that are uncorrelated, which can also mean they are statistically independent. Well, with that, we come to the end of this discussion on passing a Gaussian white noise process through a practical RC low pass filter. In my next video, I will discuss on noise equivalent bandwidth. So, stay tuned. If you found this video to be informative, kindly like and share this video and subscribe to my channel for more tutorials on analog communication. Thank you for watching. Have a good day.